We rode that freight and we didn't get hurt either. Mom and Dad tell me not to fool around the freight yard. <laughs> what do they know? Him and that stupid teacher. Kids, don't miss this exciting story of Tom and Pete. And to tell it, here is smiling Ed McConnell. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Buster Brown's on the air out here in Hollywood with Smiling Ed, Squeaky the Mouse, Midnight the Cat, and Froggy the Gremlin. And we're going to start our story uh, program off right now with our story. Well, kids, our story today is about a boy named Tom and his dog named Pete. Tom Carey lived with his mother and father in a house that stood at the very edge of a big city. Oh, just about where the city stopped and the country began. However, our story begins in the office of one Dr. Willard, who is being visited by Tom's mother and father, Fred and Margaret Carey. Step right in, please. The doctor will see you now. Thank you. <laughs> well, Dr. Willard, I... Well, we feel sort of silly coming to you about Tommy and... Silly, my dear. But I brought the child into the world, and I've taken care of him ever since. I don't know about you. Should... But he isn't sick, Doctor. Isn't sick? No. <laughs> all right, you'd better tell me all about it. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Well, it's just that... Well, we can't do a thing with him. Hmm. Can't do anything with Tom? No. Oh, now, come, come. What's this all about? Well, you see, Doc, he... Well, he's become very hard to handle. He won't study. He lies about his schoolwork. He sneaks out of classes. He won't obey us in anything. We can't believe a word he says. Oh, now, you make poor little Tommy sound pretty much like a criminal. Oh, don't say that, Doctor. That's just what we're trying to prevent. The way he's carrying on now, we're afraid that might happen. Hmm. Be surprised how many boys or little villains grow up to be mighty fine men. But, of course, all children do need sensible training. But that's just it, Dr. Willard. I've spanked the boy and raised the devil with him time after time, but it just doesn't do any good. I think you've made a common mistake. Many parents make it. They indulge their child until he's thoroughly spoiled, and they try to whip him into shape. Well, we can't let him skip school without punishment. Of course not. But, honestly, have your whippings accomplished anything? Well, no. He's usually worse after a whipping. But what else can I'm you do? I'm coming to that. Now you say he doesn't appreciate anything he has. That's right. Well, I'm going to prescribe a method that will not only help discipline the boy, but will make him appreciate what he has, too. Oh? It sounds like magic, but let's have it, Doctor. Well, first cut out all the nagging and spanking. Yes. Yeah. Next time he lies or misbehaves, weigh the crime, if you can call it that, very carefully. Then as punishment, deprive him of something you feel is fair punishment for the deed committed. For instance, if it's a little thing, take a movie away from him. If it's a serious thing, well, maybe for two or three weeks you'd fight. Well, gee, I, I don't know, Doctor. In, in a way, we've tried that. Have you tried it consistently? Well, no. It sounds good to me, Doctor. Hmm. It is good. Deprive him of enough things in a fair manner, and believe me, the shoe will pinch. He'll learn to appreciate these things you take away, too, because he'll miss them. But you have to give him a chance to earn them back, too. He must be fair in every instance. Earn them back? Yes. When he does something good, reward him. Oh. When he's bad, take something away from him. By gosh, Doctor, it, it makes sense. We, we'll try it. Oh, you bet your life. I know you're going to like this story. Yes, sir, you know a good story when you hear it. You bet. Just like you know good shoes when you see them. That's why it's Buster Brown shoes for all of us. We're buddies and we stick together. We know Buster Browns are good shoes because they're made good with good materials. Yes, and the men who make Buster Browns know just what my buddies want when it comes to style, too. That's why you just can't beat Buster Brown. Oh, they feel swell, and they look swell, and they wear and wear and wear. You know, my gang wouldn't have any other kind of shoes than Buster Browns, and you will want Buster Browns, too. Then you'll be a real member of Smiling Ed and Buster Brown gang. But just one rule we all remember. Be sure to look inside the shoe for that picture of the boy and his dog. That's my dog, Tig. He lives in a shoe. I'm Buster Brown. 
Look for me in there, too. Yes, that's right. Look for the picture of the boy and his dog inside the shoe. Then you'll know they're genuine Buster Brown shoes. Now back to our story. Well, kids, you remember that Mr. and Mrs. Carey went to see Dr. Willard when their boy Tom became such a problem they couldn't handle him. They explained to Dr. Willard that the boy lied, wouldn't do his schoolwork, cheated, and so forth. And no matter the punishment, it didn't seem to do any good. They were at their wits' end. Then the doctor told them to quit spanking and nagging the boy and recommended they punish him by taking things away from him when he was bad and rewarding him when he was good. Sounded like a good plan, and they went home determined to try it. Cold tonight, hiya, Pete. <laughs> you always meet me at the door, don't you? Good boy. Hey, Dan, never mind Pete. Listen to me. Where are my skis? I can never find anything. Uh, your skis, son? Why, uh, they're locked in the attic. Locked in the attic? Mm-hmm. Well, I want to go skiing tomorrow after school. All the kids are going to Nolan's Hill. Hello, dear. Hi. No, you're not going, Tom. Huh? I'm not going. No. Oh, Mom, you're crazy. You're not right I'm going. What do you mean I'm not going? Just this, Tommy. You're not going. You lied about your homework again. You told me last night you finished your homework. Your teacher called me today. She called you? Why, that old doe. Of course I finished that my homework. That will home- do, Tommy. You didn't do your homework. Now, let's not make it any worse. Oh, she gives me a pain. She gives us too many problems. Who can do 20 problems? Oh, the other children did them, Tom. You, you didn't try. You, you simply lied about it. And as we told you from now on, when you're bad, you're going to pay for it. And when you're good, you'll be rewarded. And nuts. You can tell that darn teacher she's she's crazy. Come on, Pete, let's go to bed. Uh, just a minute, Tommy. Tommy, come here a minute. I'm going to go to bed. You better let him go to bed, dear. He does need his sleep. Huh. Let him go. Of course he let me go. That old teacher better lay off me, too. Come on in, Pete. I'm going to shut the door. <laughs> Those skis. They hid my skis. Okay, let them hide my skis. I didn't want to go anyway. I'll show them. I got plans for tomorrow. Big plans. Yes, Tom had plans all right. And they weren't, weren't very good ones. Of course, the boy didn't realize that he was not only hurting his mother and father and teacher, but himself as well. Anyway, next day, after putting his big plans into effect, he came home. Then after dinner, his father spoke to him. Tom, your teacher called us again today. Why weren't you in school? I was in school. She's not... There's no point in lying, Tom. You skipped school. All right. Where was I if I wasn't in school? You were at the Uptown Movie Theater? I was not. I was not. How'd you know? Now, look, it's, it's always useless to lie, Tommy. The girl at the ticket window knows you. We called and asked her, and she said she sold you a ticket. Well, well I know all the stuff we had for school today anyway. Tommy, and even if Tommy, I do... I'm stopping your allowance. There'll be no more movie money until you decide to stop lying and cheating. Do you understand? Oh, Fred. Fred, I'm just frantic. Well, Fred... Tommy should have been home hours ago. Do you think perhaps he could have met with an accident? An accident? It, it's so icy, and he was riding his bike. Well, it, it is possible, of course, but oh, I, I doubt it. Oh, I'll certainly have to do something about this. He's coming home late for supper much too often. But never as late as this, Fred. Why, it's after seven already. I know it. Well, oh, it's Tom. about time, young man. I've got a word to say to you. Oh, gee, what have I done now? I didn't do nothing. Don't you know it's ten after seven? You're supposed to be home at five. Well, the guys and we're throwing snowballs. But Tom, Mother and Dad are awfully worried about you. You know we worry. Just a moment. Did you say you were throwing snowballs? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Then how did you get the cold soot on your hands and face? Huh? Oh, that's just dirt. Tommy, you were down to the railroad freight yards hopping rides on freight cars again, weren't you? Uh, I was not. I Tommy, was... stop lying. Well, well, what if I was down at the railroad yards? Why... Now, look, son, you were told to stay away from the yards. You could be killed. Now, look, 
You didn't mind and you lied. Now, the railroad yards are too far away to walk, so this is going to cost you your bicycle. Ah, who cares about that crummy old bike anyhow? Go ahead, take it. What? Come on, Pete. Fred, I'm beginning to think Dr. Willard's wrong. It's taking things away from Tommy. It, it's making him worse, Fred. Yeah, I'll have to confess, dear. I called Dr. Willard today and told him the same thing. You did? What did he say? Well, he said we've spoiled Tommy for 13 years. We can't unspoil him in a week. Mm. Oh, look, honey, we, we, we've got to stick to our guns. I don't know what else to do. More pot roast, Tommy? Another potato? Oh, gosh, no, Mom. I'm ready to bust. <laughs> yeah, you certainly stowed away a lot of food, son. Him, how? How neat it, too. I'm going ice skating tonight. Yeah, I... Ice skating tonight? Uh, look, you, you you can't go ice skating, son. I passed the lake on the way home and the red flag, the danger signal's raised. Oh, gee, I can be careful, Dad. No, no, you can't. No one can tell where the ice is thin. Son, I just can't let you go ice skating when the red flag is up. Oh, gee, Dad, I... Well, well, maybe you know best, Dad. Huh? Okay, I won't go. I've got some arithmetic to do and history composition. I think I'd rather do that. Oh, that's a very sensible attitude, son. I'm awfully happy to see you taking an interest in your studies. Yep. I well, guess I'll get to it. Come on, Petey. Let's go up to my room. <laughs> Good night, Mom and Dad. Good night. I'll just go to bed when I'm done. Good night, Tommy. <laughs> Good night, son. <laughs> well, did you hear what I heard? Yes, and I can hardly believe it. <laughs> Marge, honey, I think we're really making progress. Isn't it wonderful? Now, wait. What else did Dr. Willard say? When Tommy does right, reward him. Yeah, that's right. All right. If he does his homework, we will reward him. <laughs> hey, come on, honey. I'll I'll help you with the dishes. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Oh, dear. Well, I guess I've read about everything in the paper. <laughs> Say, our son's awfully quiet. Yes, there hasn't been a sound from his room since he went up. Mm. Do you think we ought to give his bicycle back to him? Oh, <laughs> yes, he misses the bike, I can tell. Sure he does. I think that's what's got him. Look here, he's been working hard for more than an hour. Why don't we both go in and tell him? It'll make him happy, Fred. All right, that's a deal. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tommy? What? He's not here, Fred. Hey, it's cold in here. Well, no wonder. The window's open. Marge. Hmm? Quick, see if his skates are hanging up in the closet. All right. What? Why, they're gone. And so's Pete. Well, he lied again very cleverly. Wait till I close him. All right. Come on. Where? We're going to the lake. Right or wrong, this time that kid gets the licking of his life. I'm through. Ah! 